Welcome to Opinions. The rules are simple. Step forward if you've done it, and stay where you are if you haven't. Have fun! I work in the aviation industry, so we see more and more COVID cases coming from the imported cases. So once we have our like cases uh, neutral, then we can like open up our borders again. We could avoid a lot of the imported cases, but at the same time, I feel like it should also be a personal responsibility thing. Like even if let's say borders are open right now, I wouldn't travel. Just because I'm scared, I don't want to get the virus. You must first acknowledge that yes, when you you know you close up the borders, a lot of things are affected. Like hey, you can't travel, uh, the the country may not prosper as well. But I think if it were to be done earlier, a lot of these things could have been minimized, and generally people's health wouldn't be at stake. That's the main reason why it should have been done earlier. Yeah. I feel like everyone should have a choice to do whatever they want, no matter what it is. But in this sort of time, when it's not just about you, it's about everybody else. So I don't think it should be a choice in this case. In these trying times where if you don't wear a mask, it's going to be harmful to everybody around you. I feel like everybody should just mask up. If you're planning by, you're actually hoarding everything for yourself. Maybe when you really need it, then you get it because there are other people out there. When it comes to this kind of like pandemic, of course people will be like panicking. These people might panic buy to also buy it for their neighbours, for their loved ones, for their elderly, because you don't know what they, are, they have on their plate. But of course, if you're talking about people who are just buying just because they just scared that it will run out, of course that is very irresponsible. What if these people who are panic buy that particular timing is the only timing that they had to buy these resources. I think a lot of times we overlook these kind of things and we, and we are too quick to make a judgement on people panic by irresponsible. I think that's just um, being selfish in a way for the people that you love. I think that safety distancing is better than social distancing is necessary to enforce the law. However, it's not actually very effective tonight. Go into restaurants, right? Because of people gathering around. Then, um, There was once where they straight up like fined the people because they were congregating in groups of like more than five. But I would say they are fairly effective. When people see them, they are kind of like effective in that way that it's like, there's a safety ambassador, I don't want to get fined. Like people are also like cooked up in their own houses, right? I'm a sociable person. So if I don't really meet my friends or anything, some, some days may be depressed. So it affects like mental health as well. I feel like it's made people a lot more selfish. A lot of unnecessary comments because I think people fail to realise that we're all in this together. You no know, one wanted this to happen. So I just think it's brought up a lot of unnecessary hate in the community. Covid has resulted in a lot of like home-based businesses. That's the first thing I thought of, that's why I stood here, but I feel like I would change my view. The negative is stronger than the positive, now that I think about it. We've seen like the nurse that comes home and her neighbour throws water on the person. It just shows how Singaporean react to Covid. They're already risking their lives in a pandemic and then they are away from their families. Lot. They do so much for us and yet there are still people criticising them for the things that they are doing for the nation. We should be thanking them for everything that they are doing. If we were in that position, would we be able to do the things that they are doing? Personally, my mom is a nurse. So I've seen like from the very start of the pandemic, they have really been working their ass off and they don't deserve people hating on them. I remember um, reading this uh, post about a nurse who only had one hour to change in and out of her uniform just to buy lunch. And I think that shouldn't be the case because without these nurses, without these frontliners, we definitely would not be able to handle the COVID-19 situation. I work with people who are frontliners as well and they got a lot of like sh for that. Like, hey, why are you working like outside? Oh, you're contagious, you're this, you're that, which I find it very disrespectful. When I enter a mall or whatever, they oftentimes don't even look at my phone. Like, I have to show it to them. If there's nobody sitting at the entrance, it's a human nature thing. Because nobody's watching, so we just, we just walk through without even doing it. I feel like after a while, it becomes very nature to ask that. We'll check in ourselves, we'll show the guy ourselves. 
I definitely think it's a factor. Cases are increasing, but it's not like the only reason. I feel like there's a lot that goes into why the cases are increasing, like how the travel ban was not like Im implemented correctly. We are all very careful people. The government actually implies to fine if you don't wear your mask. People have the mindset of not wanting to have another lockdown. So that is why my answer is that. Even though uh, our pledge is regardless of race, language or religion, right? Ever since this uh, whole pandemic, people keep blaming it on other races. Like, oh, Chinese people, then now suddenly it's Indian people. Like, it's not about the race, it's about the virus itself. It has nothing to do with the people. I get that it's very natural for people to try and find something else to blame whenever like, a situation happens. It's very easy to point fingers not making things any better, it's not making the virus go away. We are lost in this uh, particular situation, but I think um, it's important to you know remember that we need to work together in order to get through this um, in Singapore or basically everywhere in the world. Uh, the whole pandemic itself, it crashed my mental health because I was mainly just alone. I wasn't surrounded by people, I had no one to run to, no one to go to. Because of the restrictions and everything, my visits to the therapist also was reduced. I was literally all by myself. But I'm all better now, so... <laughs> uh, it doesn't really affect my mental health because I do TikToks, I just spend my time uh, doing new physical activities like skating. You also distance yourself from your friends who are toxic. That's the best thing you can do. Disciplinary actions, yes, but punishments like enforcing fines or whatever, I don't think so. For example, if I were to sneak up to see my partner and I were to see a text from the government saying, we know where you are, <laughs> uh, whatever. I think that's more scary than imposing me a fine. There are many individuals out there who are not able to see, maybe their extended family members. Me not being able to see my partner should not be even part of the picture. It's still not right. Again, it's not about you, it's about everybody else. It's about the whole nation, in fact. So I don't think it's a valid reason for you to break the rules. They should definitely be held accountable or given at least a warning. What if your other partner has a mental issue and the only outlet is you? as their partner. I would like to change my answer, please. <laughs> I mean, initially I thought it was like, just warnings will do, but I mean, if you repeat it and get caught with it, then sure, punishment should be given out. Like, even though you may feel like you're not sick with the virus, you never know, because like, it's asymptomatic. So I think the responsible thing would definitely be to put a mask on. If someone else is not wearing a mask, then you should go up to them and tell them because they are putting like everyone else at risk. Masks are mandatory. It's the law to wear the mask right now. So anyone who's not wearing a mask is already breaking the law. I feel like it is our responsibility to go ahead and ask them to wear the mask. Everyone should be able to remind each other to follow the rules. Yeah. I don't think it's from an ill intention, like you're telling someone to wear a mask. It's more because like I want to protect myself and I also want to protect them. I just don't think it should be done aggressively as long as they are just saying it out of like with a good heart. I think it's a very grey area because you never know their full story. So maybe if you see a story being posted on Instagram, perhaps it was taken like weeks ago or months ago, it's very hard for you as an individual to you know, be the pautokia, that's what they call it, right? I won't go to my neighbour and see how many people are in your house right now. Everyone has their own responsibility to play. Like, I feel like the government should step in instead of like individuals who may or may not know the situation. I wouldn't go out of my way to go and check like what's everyone doing and then report people just for fun. But it's more of like, if I see a situation where it's clear that this could easily lead to the spread of COVID, then yeah, I think I would try to do something about it. In comparison, Singapore versus a lot of other countries, we are actually doing a very good job in terms of keeping the numbers low. I cannot say that we are doing a good job because to me, it's we were doing a good job. So right now, in this current situation, we're not. As we can see, our numbers are increasing. Not just imported cases, but there are also community cases as well, right? Why do we have to wait for the situation to get worse or then deal with it? Why couldn't we have dealt with it earlier on?
I think it all shows that Singaporeans, we are adapting to the changes. There is no specific way to say whether we are doing really well or really not doing well. But I think the important thing here is that we are being updated. There's vaccinations coming out, things are getting better. And as long as we continue to adapt to this and continue to stay updated, continue to be there for one another, of course, we will get through this together. It's just a matter of time. Some people say that Singapore is small, that's why it's easy to control. But I feel like on the other hand, because we're small, it's much easier for something like a virus to spread very, very quickly. And yet, we are able to follow the rules and mitigate it and stop it. So again, um, it's just a matter of time. And if we continue to follow the rules and continue to take care of ourselves and other people, I think we're going to get through this. Yeah. I know with all the negatives that has happened throughout this whole circuit breaker, this whole COVID thing, I know for a fact that the government is doing their best. And I know they are also worrying about how Singaporeans will react. I'm sure they didn't mean this to happen. Yes, they could have done better, but we just be a bit more kinder to each other. If you have to tell another person to wear a mask, do it nicely. So I want all of us to just be kinder to each other despite the negativity that's happening. Yeah.